Canal journey complete. We've just winded. We moved from Ellesmere through Frankton Locks down to Maysbury Marsh, and it's been wonderful, Fran. Yes, it is. It's, it's been really peaceful and quiet, and we've loved that after the busyness of the Langloch the main canal. Um, and I've got a feeling that when we've done Langloch, Langloch, I still can't get it right. We'll probably come back here again for a week's peace and quiet. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's just been gorgeous. The only thing that I would say is that there, it is a little bit sparse with shops. There is a shop that's a bit of a walk from the canal, and we walked seven mile round trip walk uh, yesterday, the day before, to get shopping. So just bring supplies in. That's what we'll do next time. But we've still got more walks to do here, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I think we'd like to explore. come back because we haven't fully explored. Uh, we're booked to go off the canal on Friday, it's Wednesday today. So we're just going to poodle along and uh, enjoy the return trip. Yes. Recommended, I think. Very recommended. If you want peace and quiet. <laughs> <laughs> up ready to go through Frankton Locks again we've got a slot booked went to the water point and then I had to reverse around into this junction um, and just as I was halfway across reversing there was a big clump of weed so I just came out of a gear for a moment while I went across the weed so it didn't get stuck around the propeller try to go back into uh, forward gear to get around the junction nothing happened <laughs> so I ended up reversing back into this CRT boat um, and some local people have pulled us in and um, we just thought we'd lost our gears again um, didn't know what had happened um, but Rich has gone down into the engine room and into the weed hatch and this is what we found and a nice lump of uh, bungee cord wrapped around it so I guess that's been there maybe for a few days and uh, perhaps me just going across the weed although I tried to avoid it and cut the prop for a little while it still caught it anyway it's taken us about an hour to clear that Rich is inside washing up and I think we've got about 40 minutes now the locks are not very far away so we should be okay but we just gotta make our way down by midday to get through the locks and hopefully we will because we have got no food on board no wine on board, no sweets, no cake, and oh, we need to get to a shop. <laughs> well, this is going up from the bottom of the staircase locks on our way off of the, uh, the Montgomery Arm, and it's just as daunting when you're going up into a staircase because it's such a long way to go up. Just imagining that there's a huge wall of water in front of you waiting to come down. I hope they're gentle with me. And it looks like we've got more chatting with the lock keeper. So what's going to be on the shopping list this time? Like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. 
I think the lock's full. I'm not moving up anymore, but they still seem to be quite happy chatting away. We've had a bit of a day of it. We left uh, this morning just before Frankton Junction to go up the locks to come off the Montgomery Canal. At what time, Fran? 10? About 10 o'clock? Yeah, I think so. Couldn't move anywhere. We got onto the water point and then filled up with water, tried to reverse off. Couldn't reverse. I think Fran's already discussed this. So uh, we spent an hour getting the weed off and the bungee cord and the netting that was wrapped around the prop. Then we came up through the locks, which was straightforward and quick. Got the lock keeper there to help us. And then we cruised, I say cruised in inverted commas, the three miles from there to Ellesmere. And boy, I've never seen a canal so busy. It was like bumper cars. It, it was. <laughs> I mean, we were contributing to the busyness, I know. But we've never been on such a busy canal. And uh, so we finally got to Ellesmere, jostled our way to find a mooring spot near the supermarket because we've got so much shopping to get, we've run out of everything. We didn't have flour or, or coffee or anything, did we? <laughs> <laughs> or chocolate, imagine. And sweeties and cake. <laughs> so now we've shopped, brought everything back to the boat taken the boat out of Ellesmere, back on the way to Hlangothlan. We've gone about a mile and a half and we are now nicely in the country. It's half past four, so it's taken us all day just yeah. to get a little bit. It would have been quicker to walk, it but was. It was been, it's been 27 degrees again today. It's been roasting. And humid, like overcast, really hot. So but anyway, it's not too here. shabby where we are. Look at this. Not too shabby. Cheers. Cheers. You can see I'm in the water. Yeah. <laughs> Probably all along the Welsh English borders, there's going to be lots of these. Um, this one, do you know, I can't remember what it's called. Whittington Castle. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've left the boat. I think we've got about a two mile walk there. Um, not sure, don't know that much about it until we get there. We'll find out more. I know there's a cafe there um, and I've got a feeling it's free. I think it's run by the community, but we'll, we'll see when we get there. So hot day. It's a sultry morning, isn't it? It's yeah. uh, a bit. Uh, muggy as they say but it's alright because uh, I've brought the raincoats this time yeah <laughs> <laughs> and the water and the everything we're prepared today so. yes uh, doggies are loving it mm. running around like a couple of loony dogs and there's blackberries everywhere so either today or tomorrow the next task is at hand so I think it's blackberry jam um, in the absence of any gin to put blackberries in, so it has to be jam. 
<laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> Suddenly become very squelchy underfoot. <laughs> oh, Jess! Just peak water, hunchy, does it? had a gentleman comment on one of our videos recently that he doesn't like it when we go off the canals it's just rather we stuck to the canal and uh, did videos just of that well to be honest our channel's never been about that has it it's never no. been just about the canal a large proportion of the of it is but we've always got off the canal we've always gone for a walk and uh, it's our lifestyle that we're vlogging not just about the canal system as entertaining that is but this is our reason for being isn't it just exploring everywhere we go we just love to get off the canal and just see what's around us i guess it's one of our reasons for taking up the canal life anyway apart from loving the boat and loving the, the canals themselves is that there's so many places in the country that we've never been to and never seen and um you get that you know this is a perfect way of doing it because we've got a lovely home to live on yeah while we're travelling and I can't think of it being any better really. But on so, the other hand we get so many comments don't we from people saying we love your excursions of the canal take us along with you so that's what we'll continue to do. The stone castle was built in the 12th and 13th century, changed hands due to royal decree many times. It was built primarily as a defence against the Welsh, and there's a whole string of such castles all down the English-Welsh border. But it's a marvellous find, Whittington Castle, and uh, it's free to come and walk around. They've got a cafe which is open most days, but uh, sod's lord, it's not open today. But yeah, Beautiful place, well worth a walk. And the added bonus to this lovely day out is that we've just passed a dog groomer and she has a slot for Archie in three quarters of an hour. So I usually cut his hair, but it, it, it's so full of seeds. I'm gonna let the professionals have a go at him. He's got no idea. What's going to happen? Oh, Archie. <laughs> What's going to happen? We'll be in the beer garden as well. <laughs> Come on, Jess. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, you can't get him. I just can't ever get his back coat that short. I think that's. Oh, no. We're having for lunch a couscous salad. Um, it's nothing special again, and it's just our version of something that's done worldwide. And like everything that we do, you can put into it whatever ingredients you've got. But we've just found that if you've got some dried couscous, you can always make a lunch out of it. So we've boiled the kettle and I'm just going to put some couscous in a bowl. It swells up to about three times the amount. Um, and just top that with boiling water. And that needs to soak for five to ten minutes. And while that's cooking, I'll just get the rest of the ingredients together. A little stir. So we are using um, parsley, salad onions, chives from the roof, 
some celery leaf, a stick of celery, pepper, mushrooms, courgette and a little bit of leek and it will all be raw so it's really good for you and just to top it off I'm going to toast some sunflower seeds just to give it a little bit of crunch. So while the couscous is cooking or soaking I'm going to chop everything up really fine, put the garlic in some olive oil to soak for a minute or two and then just mix it all together. So here we go. So pleased with all the herbs because they virtually have been free and we just keep picking a leaf off every now and again and they just keep growing and it just really adds flavour to whatever you're cooking for the sake of one little pot on the roof. So the couscous is soaking up and fluffing up now. You just fluff it with a fork. Separate all the grains off. So the garlic is soaking in the olive oil. Normally I'd add some lemon juice to that, but we don't have any. Um, I'm going to just add a little bit of Henderson's relish, just because we like the flavour of that. And a little bit of balsamic vinegar, just to give it a little bit of acidity. If you haven't got a Henderson's relish, what would you use? Worcestershire sauce or anything. Lem lemon juice would be the favourite just to give it a little bit of flavour. That's fine. And I would always normally put some chopped tomato in there, but we don't have any of that again. So it will be fine without. I'm just going to quickly toast the sunflower seeds in a dry pan just for a couple of minutes. So these are just toasted off just to bring the flavour out a little bit brown. Chuck those in and just stir this all together now. Trying a little bit to cut down bread, we realise that with the homemade bread we were eating far too much um, and in the hot weather you don't always want a heavy lunch and for us this is perfect. It would also make a great accompaniment just if you were having fish or meat as a meal but for us we love it just as it is. And there we are. Lunch done, I guess 10 minutes from picking the veg to having it on the plate. Ready, Rich? Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, that's really good. Really good, Fran. Really good. Really quick, cheap, healthy. Just use anything that's in the cupboard. We've done it with raw cauliflower, raw broccoli, raw carrot. Whatever takes your fancy, stick it all in. <laughs> and little flowers as well. No twee. <laughs> Uh, we've done about uh, just a mile and a half today and uh, two locks to go up here and uh, we're in a queue there's three boats in front of us going up and now there's another three boats turning up behind us to go up so we're stuck in the middle and it's a sultry hot day it's going to get up to about 28 degrees today but uh, that's nothing compared to London's 35 degrees today. Centigrade, that is, folks. So yeah, we'll be just getting up these locks, I think, and stopping as soon as we can, because uh, don't fancy being in a procession of boats. We're next to go in. 
but there are now seven boats behind us. Seven boats, I've never known anything like it. So we're definitely gonna get through these two locks and just pull in soon as we can and uh, leave it till tomorrow. Well, that's it for today. Two and a half miles and two locks. That's enough for anyone in this heat. Found a nice shady spot. Mm -hmm.